All right, you can turn in your Bible to Revelation chapter 12. As I was doing the study on the this expository study thing, I, I came across this and I thought, you know, this is very interesting. And I was going to put it in that and I thought, no, you know what, this is way too important. Um, I want to show you another proof for the catching away of the bride of Christ being before the time of Jacob's trouble. And of course, the popular term for that that people know is pre-tribulation pre rapture. All right, I'm going to show it to you here today. Um, I'm going to show you that, in fact, just to give you a little brief synopsis of where we're going to be going with this, and don't start posting the stupid comment down there, you know, watch the whole thing, look at the scriptures, turn your Bible and read the scriptures to make sure I'm telling you the truth. All right, I'm not just going to stand here and read off a bunch of scriptures and whatever else. No, turn in your Bible, your King James Bible. Don't waste your time with the new versions. They're from the Vatican. Getting other videos on that, but uh, I'm going to give you a little brief synopsis, okay? And then I'm going to show you the scriptures to back this up. Israel is the woman that's talked about in this passage here, okay? She has a holy child, a child that is born that the devil tries to devour, and that child is called up to heaven. And we, as Christians, are born into a spirit of adoption. We are part of Christ's body. And there are scriptures that point to us being Israel is our mother, all right? And, you know, it's very interesting. And we are called up. And you see the time of Jacob's trouble, and the woman stays on the earth, by the way. Let me say that. The woman stays on the earth, and it's about her. It's not about the church. It's not about the child, all right? The child of the woman goes up, called up to heaven. And the devil persecutes the woman, Israel. All right? There's a lot of scriptures we're going to be going over today to prove this thing. But just want to give you that to chew on. Let's read the verses here, the first six verses of Revelation chapter 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Okay? Now let's go back through it. All right, we're going to go back through and cover these scriptures in, in much greater detail. Now, the expository study, it's coming up. I'm going to get into some more of the stuff here. But this argument right here that this thing proves the rapture, I thought I'd better do a separate video on this. But verse 1, we'll cover more on this when we do the other study. This woman there, there's only three possibilities of who this is. Okay, Number one, you would have Mary. If you look up Mary, Queen of Heaven, do a Google image search, you're going to see this woman in the blue and the white gown, you know, and she's standing there, and sometimes she'll have a little child with her, and she's got the crescent moon underneath her feet, and she's got 12 stars around her head, all right, um, which is really ridiculous, because if you study the Queen of Heaven term back in the book of Jeremiah, we're going to look at this in the other study, but back in the book of Jeremiah, the Queen of Heaven is a pagan goddess, that the Jews are getting in trouble for worshiping. So uh, it's a little, you know, ridiculous to call your, you know, God their goddess Mary, the queen of heaven. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, that's one possibility. It's Mary, which is not true. The second possibility, actually, if you look it up in a Catholic Bible in the footnotes, I looked it up in some of mine that I have, the second possibility is that it's Israel, which is what the Bible teaches, that it is Israel. We'll see that as we continue. But they, the Catholics will say it's Old Testament Israel and New, New Testament Israel is the church. The church replaced Old Testament Israel. That's the origin of the, the Catholic church is the, the one where the, you know, they come up with the whole thing of replacement theology. Again, it's a satanic doctrine. They're pushing Israel totally out of the picture when God made promises to Old Testament Israel. 
and then they try to steal those promises and put them on themselves. No, so you have the three possibilities. Mary, Israel has become the church, or just Israel. And the third possibility is the one that's the truth. All right, It's Israel. And how do you know that? Well, let's continue. Verse 2. She being and she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. Is there another passage of scripture that talks about a woman in travail? First Thessalonians chapter five. Beginning in verse one. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, notice he switches. He's talking to Christians and then he switches and he says, When they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Hmm. The woman is in travail. Verse 4, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Now, many people read this passage, and I, can, I include myself in this, and you look at the they, and you say, well, that's the lost world. That's partly true. But let's be a little bit more specific. Who is the coming time period for? The time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob is Israel. Okay? Jacob had two names that God called him. Jacob, and he called him Israel as well. All right, so you read the Bible, you do a study on that, Jacob is Israel. Israel's trouble. So when we read this passage here, I believe, verse 3, when they shall say, I think that they is Israel. See? The Lord is going to make a full end of all the nations out there. The times of the Gentiles will be fulfilled. You know, the Bible talks about the fullness of the Gentiles become in. God is saying, hey, you know what? All the Gentile nations out there and everything else, and, and I've set before thee an open door, no man can shut it and stuff, the Philadelphian church and things, and, and you know all these great movements of all the different nations and all the different kindreds and peoples and stuff. That's the church age. But God is now starting to turn his attention back to the nation of Israel. And we are going to be leaving, and then God's going to say, okay, now that the body of Christ is gone, now the full attention comes back to the nation of Israel. That's what it's all about. I mean, think about this, Christian. Are we really travailing over anything? I mean, we're irritated by the world and, and things. And, and, you know, but if I say to you, do you have peace in the Lord Jesus Christ? Is your, is your salvation finished? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just this morning, I'm a little bit frazzled right now. So excuse me if I'm a little bit, you know, irritable here. But uh, we had a real bad situation. We were getting all this warm weather. The snow is melting, which is nice in some ways, but then it starts to flood the basement. And one of my, the, the sump pump pipe that comes out, it uh, got some ice in it. And so it slowed down the flow and it made the one sump pump run like all night and it overheated and, and stuff. So I'm like undoing things and stuff. It's like 5.30 this morning. I'm down there. The basement floor is covered with water and I'm like, oh boy. And I was working on it for a couple of hours. Finally got the, the situation. I mean, we almost had the, the you know, basement flood. And uh, the one sump pump pipe goes out and there's cracks in the wall, the old concrete block wall and the water's starting to come back through. It's It got clogged. The other, I have two sump pumps now. I I put in another one last year, but but uh, just nightmare, just total nightmare. But am I in travail? No. You know, it's just like, hey, you know, whatever whatever happens here, if the basement floods and we lose the whole place and, you know, whatever, place burns down, the electric short and, you know, whatever. Whatever happens, I don't have to worry about my salvation. I know where I'm going when I die. You see? So, I'm not in travail. How about the lost world? The non-Jewish lost world. Are they in travail? No, a lot of them think that the world's getting better. Who's in travail? The Jews. I actually watched a, a lost Jewish rabbi, Tobias Singer, the guy's name is, hates, you know, Jesus Christ and, you know, puts his whole purpose of his life is to is to tear down Jesus and stuff. Jesus wasn't the Messiah and all this other stuff. 
But I actually heard him say the one time, one of his videos, you know, I was watching some of the stuff for research and, and whatever. I was trying to see whatever. But, uh, you know, and he actually said at one point, he said that the nation of Israel, he said, we're going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble and our Messiah is going to come at the end of that. He knows about that. And he's like, so for those out there, he said, that, you know, he said, rejoice with us because we are about ready to, the nation of Israel is about ready to give birth to the Messiah. He, he compared it to being at work and he said, you get a phone call and the doctor says, your wife had a baby boy, congratulations. And he's like, rejoice with us. He's like, you bring your family and your friends together and you rejoice that a, that a man has been born. And he's like, that's the nation of Israel. We're, we're rejoicing because our Messiah is almost ready to come. You know, I thought, isn't that interesting? The travail is the Jews. It's not the church. I'm not in travail. It's not the lost world. They're not in travail. It's the Jews. Isn't that interesting? The nation of Israel. Go back to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. We're going to see this, this woman and this child thing are very interesting. Verse... Three. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, having and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Okay, now, another little interesting side note there. Uh, you have the seven there. And isn't it interesting that this time it's the red dragon, it's Satan. Read about that, this red dragon, down in uh, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan. Okay, so this red dragon is Satan, and yet he has there seven heads and seven crowns. Hmm, very, very interesting. Uh, if you know anything about the character of the devil in the Bible, he counterfeits the Lord God all the time. And we've been reading the book of Revelation. It's seven spirits of God, the seven this, seven that. Seven is God's number. And yet the devil comes along and he counterfeits that. And if you read over in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 through 15, it talks about Satan appears as an angel of light. All right? And his ministers appear as the ministers of righteousness. So be careful who you're listening to. Church preachers, you know, and things like this. Ministers of righteousness. They're ministers of Satan in reality. Be very careful. That's why you need a Bible. Right? And if you go to some uh, church or whatever else, some gathering of Christians... And they're not encouraging you to look up things in the King James Bible. Uh, you'd better run away from that place. Okay. And if they're telling you to do things and things like that that are not found in the pages of Scripture, you better be real careful listening to them. Okay. Better think about that. Let's go to verse 4. Revelation chapter 12, verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Okay. Stop there. What are the stars? I mean, does the devil just, you know, again, think, think of the lunacy of, of how most people think in this world. The devil takes his tail and he goes out and he gets a third part of the, of the burning gaseous balls out there and, you know, that they call stars, that NASA would call stars, burning gaseous uh, balls of goo, you know, and they're out there, you know, light years, millions of light years away and, and the devil takes his tail and gets them. And then he cast them to the earth. Did cast them to the earth there, verse 4. And the point of that would be what? Okay, it would burn up the earth, wouldn't it? If there are gaseous burning little goo balls out there in the, in, you know, outer space. Uh, they're not gaseous balls of goo, okay, like NASA would have you believe. They're lying to you. I mean, some some dude sitting in a in a you know research laboratory. He's got a telescope and he's looking out there and he's like, that star is so far away, but I know exactly what the composition of it is. I can tell you what it's made out of. <laughs> Can't tell you anything of the kind. All right, what is it? What are the stars there? Verse nine, Revelation twelve, verse nine. Go down there. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The stars are angels. All right? Important to remember that. 
Back up to verse 4. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. What happened when Jesus was born? I mean, this is the passage here. The woman there is talking about Israel. Okay? The child. When he was born, what happened? King Herod passed a decree that all the young boys should be killed. Why? Because Satan was there trying to devour the Lord Jesus Christ. So see, this is talking about, uh, you know, this is a future event. Revelation chapter 12, of course, it's there. But it's talking about something that happened way in the past. Why? Because John is in eternity. So he's seeing things that are going, you know, way back, you know, to even a little bit before his day and then way into the future. That's what's going on there. But I find it very interesting that the devil was trying to devour Jesus Christ when he was born. And he worked through a king, by the way, King Herod. And you'll see that theme, another theme in the Bible. You'll see that the devil... Jesus and the devil were out there in the wilderness, and the devil says, you fall down and worship me, and I'll give you the kingdoms. He's called the God of this world in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. And you can look through the Bible. There's times when the devil gets into a roar. He did it with Judas Iscariot. Satan entered into him. And Jesus even said, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil. A devil. Okay? So... And you say, explain all that stuff to me. You know, show me. I can't explain a lot of things in the Bible. I believe it. But I can't explain it. All right? The just shall live by faith. See how that thing works? I believe you say, could you give me a modern day example? I believe a lot of the popes are walking uh, little, uh, how would you even say it? Um, automobiles for the pope, or for the, for the devil, excuse me. <laughs> you know, in other words, the devil can just get in there and he can just tell them what to do. You know, and I mean, this Pope Francis, I've seen a couple times, you know, that he'll be someplace and all of a sudden he just like goes into this trance. He just sit there. I understand he's a Jesuit, you know, they do the whole contemplation thing and whatever, you know. And, but I think a lot of those guys are just shells, empty, hollow vessels that the devil can enter into and just go do whatever he wants. But, and I, you know, why I'm saying that is because I believe that the devil entered into King Herod and had him go out and kill, you know, pass this decree to have all the little boys killed there in Israel. But I want to show you another little interesting tie-in here. You say, but how does this relate to the body of Christ? Because, I mean, we are part of his body. We'll get into that here in just a little bit. First Peter chapter 5. We know that the devil definitely tried to destroy Jesus Christ. What about 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8? It says here, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Hmm. You see, as a Christian, I'm part of the body of Christ. And it gets even deeper than that. We're going to look at that as we continue in this study. So, have there been times that the devil's tried to devour you? Try to wreck your faith. Mm -hmm. And again, as you get older as a Christian, you, you start to go through some things and whatever else, you're going to realize that uh, a lot of what Jesus experienced in the, in the Gospels there and things, uh, you're going to experience a lot of that stuff too. You're going to have friends that are Christians, kind of like disciples, and you're going to have the beloved disciple, John. You're going to have the disciple that uh, is loudmouthed and obnoxious and, and basically misrepresents you a lot of times, and you have to correct them lovingly, like Peter. And you're going to have your Judas Iscariot. That you're going to think that they're your best friend, and they're going to stab you in the back. <laughs> Believe you me. All right? You will relate to Jesus Christ as a Christian. But let's look at verse 5. So the devil tries to devour Jesus Christ when he's born and he also will try to devour you when you are born again you will experience it Revelation chapter 12 verse 5 here's where it starts to get very interesting 
And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Stop there. What's this a reference to? Well, go back to the Old Testament, to the book of Psalms. Psalm 2. I always am tempted to say chapter, but there are no chapters in the book of Psalms. They are psalms. So, Psalm 2, beginning in verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Remember that. Okay. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. These little people out there, the Jesuits and the Black Pope and the, the Illuminati and the CFR and the whatever, they're losers. Okay? The Lord's actually laughing at them. Verse 6. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Did David, was David begotten of the Lord? No, no. Who is begotten of the Lord? Jesus. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Begotten. When you're created, you're not begotten. All right? Important to remember that. Verse 8. Ask of me and I shall give thee the inherit of the the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. We all have to remember that. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Have you put your trust in Jesus Christ? Okay, then you get a blessing and you have a relationship with the God of heaven. You are part of his body. If you want to talk about eternal security, that's some pretty good eternal security there when you're bone of his bones and flesh of his flesh. All right, pretty good eternal security. But don't forget verse 11. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. You know, I've had that times and this morning was one of them where things are going wrong and I start to kind of get those thoughts coming into my head where I'm foolishly charging the Lord. Like, God, don't you know what you're doing here? Why is this happening? And so, man, shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. You know, you got to think about this stuff as a Christian. God knows everything. We are his children. That's true. He is our father. Praise the Lord. But he's also a king. He is the God of the universe. And you serve him with reverence and fear. Don't forget that. And it's easy to sometimes because we live in a very wicked world and, you know, it can get very vexing. Go, book, go to the book of Acts. We're going to see the New Testament tie in here to Psalm 2. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verse 23. Okay, it says here, And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David hast said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, hmm, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and, all, and the people of Israel, were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done, and now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child 
Jesus. These are Jews, saved Jews early on. This is before you know the gospel's really going to the Gentiles. Again, Acts is a transition book. You always have to remember that. So don't go, you know, watch out for people that are trying to take you back to Acts chapter 2 for salvation. All right, be very careful about that. But you see this thing there, they're referring back to what's going on in Psalm 2. And they call Jesus the Holy Child. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Hmm. You say, well, how does that relate to us? I mean, we're bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. I understand that. Which is, we're going to be looking at those verses just in case you're not aware of this. Because I always have to remember that there are new Christians that come along and don't, might not know this. Galatians chapter, what do we have? Four. Galatians chapter four. The book of Galatians. And again, if you're new, you know, I know I go kind of fast and things, but just pause it and look it up the scriptures. You know, you need, that's, uh, I try to stress this fairly frequently. You need to look up the scriptures from a King James Bible. Read them, okay? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God, right? Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth, okay? Um, John 17, 17, there was the second one. The first one's in Romans, but the point is you have to look this stuff up. Being a Bible-believing Christian means that you're believing not always what you're hearing, but what you're seeing, okay? Reading in the scriptures. But check this out. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Jerusalem is the capital city of what country? Israel. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. That's why I get very, very irritated when I see these people and they, they just, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm a Bible-believing Christian, you know, and but I hate Israel, this modern-day nation of Israel. Uh, you want to look at a quick test to see if somebody's really saved or not? What's their attitude about Israel? Israel is wicked as a nation, so is America, <laughs> but Israel, there's some wickedness there. The Jewish people have rejected Jesus as their Messiah. I understand all that stuff. I'm not saying that all people in Israel are saved. I'm not saying that. A very you know, small number are saved over there. A lot of them are wicked. That's the whole reason for the time of Jacob's trouble. Again, you know, yeah. But uh, a Christian that's truly saved is going to understand I am an adopted child into that family there that is Israel. I have a very special relationship to that nation of Israel. She's my mother, spiritually speaking. Why on earth would I hate her? Why on earth would I look at the nation of Israel and look over there and see these people that are there, the Jews that are there, fulfilling the prophecies that are not only Old Testament but New Testament prophecies of the rebirth of the nation of Israel? And why would I look at those people and hate them? It's unnatural. It's strange. Very, very weird. But I want to show you the verse that talks about the scriptures that talk about us being part of Christ's body. If you are not aware of these, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28. Okay, it says, So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth, nourisheth and cherisheth it. Excuse me. Tongue twister there. Even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Jesus Christ and the church are one, one flesh. So when we read back in Revelation chapter 12 about this child, understand that you're part of that, Christian. Not only are we part of Christ's body, but also Jerusalem is the mother of us all. That's why we spend eternity in New Jerusalem. 
Well, I can't stand the Jews. I'm a Christian, but I can't stand the Jews. I don't think so. I don't think so. And all these idiots out there, you know, uh, I'm, I'm a true Jew, you know, we're the true Jews. You know, we live here in New York or Arizona or some place like that, but we're the true Jews. Uh, well, then you really don't know much scripture because, you know, the true Jews are supposed to be over in Israel. Israel is not a symbolic, uh, spiritualized, magical place that you decide based on your cult that you're part of. No, Israel is a geographic location. It's physical real estate that was promised to the Jewish people. I mean, you know, oh, brother, could you do a study on this whole Hebrew roots thing and on the whole, you know, all these people, the, the black people that say that they're Jews and the white people that say that they're Jews and everything. I don't need to do a study on it. Okay, there are some things that you don't need to debunk with all kinds of really in-depth research and whatever else. You just look and you say, oh, you're Jewish? Are you in Israel? No, well, those are the fake Jews over there. Well, they're fulfilling Bible prophecy. That's kind of an, uh, an issue, you know. If you're truly Jewish, then take your people and go back to the land that God promised you. I mean, try that. Try it. All these devil-possessed people out there, you know, that irritates me. Revelation chapter 5. What about the thing of ruling with a rod of iron? You say, well, Jesus is going to rule and, rot, rule and reign with a rod of iron. Sure. What about Christians? Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 through 11. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. I've been through this thing many times in my studies, but again, if you're new, um, this is talking about Christians, the 24 elders there, obviously representing Christians. Why? Because Old Testament Jews are not going to be redeemed to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. All right? And the Bible gives 12 boundaries, natural boundaries, that God has separated, you know, ethnicities into, essentially. And 12 times 2 is 24. So I believe the 24 elders are two people from each of the 12 boundaries. That would line up with why they're saying that they've been redeemed to God out of every tongue, people, nation. Out of every kindred, tongue, people, nation. Okay? What I believe. It's not the 12 apostles and then 12 you know, patriarchs and things. No, it can't be. They're all Jews. See? Verse 10, And hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Jesus Christ is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Absolutely. But if you're a Christian and you suffer, you're going to rule and reign with Christ. He rules and reigns with the rod of iron, but we're there to enforce the laws that he decides on. No more voting. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Verse 11. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Okay. Again, covered before. I believe these angels there are Christians. Okay. In the resurrection we are as the angels of God in heaven. So, let's go back to Revelation... Or yeah, Revelation chapter 12, verse 5. Okay, the second part there. Well, we'll just read the whole verse. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Jesus Christ and us as his body and also Israel is the mother. Jerusalem is the mother of us all. Okay. Look at the second part. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. You say, well, that's Jesus Christ. <laughs> Duh. You know, this is Israel in the passage. Okay, Jesus is the one, the child that's born. And he goes up, you know, he's taken up there. You know, caught up. Let's look about that. Acts chapter 1. We're going to see about the passage where Jesus is taken up. Kind of giving it away a little bit here. The Bible doesn't say that Jesus was caught up. It says he was taken up. And I believe for a very specific reason, which we will be talking about. Acts chapter 1, verse 9. 
says here, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. I believe that every word of God is pure and every word is important and significant in this King James Bible. Now, I know you can make the argument taken up, caught up, it means the same thing. Uh, yes, it means the same thing, but you see it's spelled differently. And I believe for a reason. What does the Bible teach about caught up in Scripture? Well, the words, that phrase, caught up, appears only four times in the New Testament. Actually, in the whole Bible, really. But only four times in the New Testament. Let's look them up. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth, such an one called up to the third heaven. There's the first reference, called up. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for such a law, excuse me, not which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth, but now I forbear lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. I believe what happened there, and if you look it up, Acts chapter 14, verses 19 through 20, Paul is basically stoned to death. And they suppose that he's dead, they carry him outside of the city, and they're all standing around going like, oh boy, what are we going to do? And Paul stands back up, comes back to life, and he walks back into the city to preach. What an example for us as Christians. <laughs> you know, you get knocked down, get back up and go back to fighting. Um, words to live by for sure. But uh, I believe while he was dead there, I believe that he was actually, his soul went up to heaven. And he sees things. And that's why he's saying, I, whether in the body or out of the body, I, I don't know. I, I didn't really understand that part of it. But he saw heaven. And he's saying, I'll glory, I'll glory in that up there, what I experienced up there. I, you know, there's glory there, and I'm not in a body of flesh anymore, so there's no sin and whatever else. But he's saying, I'm not going to glory down here, and I'm not really going to tell anybody. It's first of all, it's unlawful for me to enter, or for me to say what I saw and what I heard there, because um, he's in eternity. He knows what's happening, you know. But he comes back down. He's like, I can't talk about what I saw, and even if I was allowed to, I still wouldn't, because I don't want people worshiping me. And again, another great example to follow. Uh, as you get older as a Christian, you do things for the Lord, a lot of times you'll, get, you'll start to see people trying to emulate you. I've seen that in my own life. Um, the Lord's done great things through this ministry, and I praise Him for it. All glory belongs to Him. Uh, I say like this, I'm pointing like this, people are always point at Himself. No, I'm pointing north, okay? Uh, the Lord's throne is in the sides of the north. That's why I point north. <laughs> you know, I realize he's on the present too, so don't give me any trouble, you know. But, uh, but, you know, you have to watch out for the thing of letting people worship you, okay? Um, I get a lot of good questions from people, but sometimes I'll get questions that they're like asking me to make personal decisions for them, and I'm going, um... You know, you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You work that out between the two of you. You want to know things from the Bible or, or, you know, I have different people come and say, you know, I view you as an elder of the church and I have a question. Fine, great. That's not a problem. But when I get people and they start saying, you know, I just see a little bit too much their worship and whatever, you know, and you'll see that as you get older as a Christian. You'll, you'll relate to Paul there, definitely. 
but you see the first two references to called up. And I believe the Lord will put things into His Word for very important reasons. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. You should be able to know this one if you've been saved for a while. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Hmm. So the, your third reference to being caught up is a reference to the catching away of the bride of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Right there. Interesting. Well, what is the, uh, what's the fourth instance of called up? Because there's four in the Bible. Second Corinthians, we have two there, chapter 12, where Paul's speaking. Then you have 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, there in verse 17. The fourth one is Revelation chapter 12, about this child being caught up to God. But what else did it say there? Go back to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse 5. Her child was caught up unto God. Remember, her. Who's the her? Israel. Jerusalem is the mother of us all. We're born in with a spirit of adoption. Who's our adopted mother? Israel. Don't talk badly about your mama, okay? Her child, Christians, was caught up unto God. We saw Jesus, it says, taken up. We are caught up as Christians. And I thought it was kind of interesting, too. We, you know, I was talking about this with my wife, and I said, you know, it's kind of interesting, like Paul, he's dead, and he goes up. He's whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. He's dead. He represents a living saint. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. See? He's a dead saint in Christ up there. What about John? He goes up. But notice the rest of verse 5. We're going to get back to John in just a minute here. Notice the rest of verse 5. Her child was called up unto God and to his throne. Where in Acts chapter 1 does it say anything about Jesus going up to God's throne? It doesn't. Is there somebody that did get caught up and uh, they saw a throne? Let's turn to Revelation chapter 4. Verse 1. After this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said, Come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Almost like he was uh, called up. Verse 2. And immediately I was in the Spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Her child was called up to God and to his throne. What's it talking about? Revelation chapter 12 it's talking about the body of Christ. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed. We are hindering the Antichrist. We are letting the Antichrist. Let, you know, he who letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Let in your King James Bible means hinder to stop. The body of Christ is stopping the Antichrist from showing up. Why? Because we are God's child. Do you see it? And what happens to that woman? There in Revelation chapter 12. What happens to her? Verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. The woman stays on the earth. You see, that woman is in travail. She's 
she wants to have a child. There you see, Israel, right now. They're looking. They want their Messiah. They're desperate for their Messiah. Those that are aware of what's going on, I realize a lot of them are just as brain dead as the average American. I understand that. But, you know, the ones that are aware are going, okay, we are like totally encircled here. There's missiles being fired at us and there's, you know, it's dangerous to walk down the streets and Palestinians trying to kill us and all this other stuff. They want their Messiah. They're in travail, you see. And that child was born nearly 2,000 years ago. He was taken up to God, but his body is still on the earth. You're looking at part of it. I'm a Christian. I'm part of the body of Christ. And this whole system's not going to happen. This whole Antichrist and all the other stuff and everything else, it's not going to happen until the child, those of you who are saved, till the child leaves and gets caught up to God and to his throne. It's right there. You know, and I mean, really, it's just like, I don't even need Revelation chapter 12 to prove that the rapture happens before the time of Jacob's trouble. I don't even need that. I mean, there's so many scriptures back through the Pauline epistles, and it's just, it's, it's plain as day. Um, early on in my ministry, I said, well, I don't know if it's a salvation issue. I don't say that anymore. Jesus Christ said back in the book of John, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that believeth and, and he that liveth and believes in me, you know, he'll never die. I'm paraphrasing there. I'm not going to turn to it right now. Jesus is the rapture. See, I reject it. Then you're rejecting Jesus Christ. It's just as simple as that. I mean, it's just, there's just so many scriptures to prove this thing. If you're saved, you're leaving. <laughs> okay? We are part of Christ's body. We're not going into the time of Jacob's trouble. I don't have to be in travail. Israel is in travail. The lost world is not in travail. The body of Christ is not in travail. Who's in travail? Israel. <laughs> it's right there. And the child that was born way back nearly 2,000 years ago, there's still that new birth. You see? Until the church age ends. And then that child is called up unto God and to his throne. And that child comes back down as the Messiah and the body of Christ with him. And we rule and reign with Jesus Christ. Pretty fascinating. So that's going to be it. Um, I apologize. My nerves are a bit frazzled right now. Um, as I was saying earlier, you know, we had a major situation this morning and it was just like, you know, I got really frustrated and I was like, you know what, I'm not even going to do the sermon. I'm just going to, you know, I got to get so much other stuff done and things. And I thought, yeah, that's, that's exactly what the devil would want. You know, our time is limited. Okay. The body of Christ is not going to be here much longer. And that's why I'm just, I'm trying to stay as active as I can. And the devil's attacking right now. I mean, it's, it used to be, you know, he, you know, I'd have a little time off now. <laughs> It's just like every couple of days, it's like major attack. And I'm going like, ah, you know, and maybe, you know people say, well, brother, it's supposed to be. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, you know, I appreciate it, you know, but uh, it gets so old sometimes, you know. So um, just stay with it, brethren. And I tell these stories not because I want, you know, sympathy and, you know, stuff. You know, I'm, I'm telling you these stories because I know a lot of you are going through some really rough stuff right now. And again, I saw somebody in the comments and they're like, oh, you know, I, my, my husband's dying of cancer or something, you know, and he's complaining about his snowblower or whatever. I'm not trying to say that I suffer more than other people, okay? I'm not trying to say, look at me, I, I'm the greatest sufferer on the earth. Please, I don't want that. You know, I don't want to be the greatest sufferer, okay? I'm just saying, you know, stay encouraged, brethren. Stay encouraged. Um, we're eternally secure. We're in Christ. The child, we are children of God. You know, Israel is, is the mother of us all. You know, Jerusalem there is the mother of us all. We'll say it that way. It's what the Bible says. It's, it's a wonderful future that we have. No matter how bad things get on this earth, 
you have a tremendous future to look forward to. We all do if you're saved. You know, it's wonderful. That's why I tell the stories. That's why I want people to know, you know, what's going on. Because, you, you know, I don't want you thinking, you know, boy, Brother Brian's just got it made and just has it so easy and things. I mean, we get hated just like other people. We have problems. We have health issues. We get sick. We get down. We, you know, those things happen, you know. But we have amazing, precious promises in this book. So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, I do have some things I need to get to. My back is about broken, and I haven't even eaten yet. It's 3 o'clock uh, in the afternoon. So, But I just thought to myself, you know, and just as a little bit of encouragement, when the devil attacks, the best thing that you can do is attack back. All right? Put out a video. Um, say, you know what, Satan, you attacked me. All right, just because of that, I'm going to get even in fact, I'm going to get even farther ahead here. Don't get even, you know, get it, get ahead, as one guy said, I remember, in the past. <laughs> but, uh, you know, say, okay, Satan, you did that, all right? Just because you attacked me today, I'm going to go out and I'm going to get out 20 tracks tomorrow or later today or whatever else, you know. Just because you're attacking me, I'm going to fight back. So uh, that's what I'm doing right now. So anyhow, uh I think that's going to be it so thank you to everybody that prays and uh see you know i have joy in the midst of suffering it's wonderful um but uh please do keep us in your prayers um that's going to be it thank you for watching